What's going on? Welcome to another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans Real Talk. We got a whole lot to get into. One big knockout in the world of boxing. A whole lot of NFL action going down. A couple of injuries to report. But before we get into all of that, let me introduce my co-host, Legend in Two Games, Eric Sanchez. What's up, bro? What's really good, bro? I'm super excited to get into it. Uh, we've been very spoiled recently with some great boxing. That's leading, obviously, into Week 8 NFL and some NBA talk. So I'm looking forward to all of it. So, man, let's just jump right into this uh, fight. Six-round knockout, Tank, Javante Davis. Uh, did you expect the fight to go as long as it did? Yes. Um, I talked about it on, on the Sanchez Show podcast and my recent breakdown where I thought uh, Santa Cruz was going to test Javante. He was going to make Javante uncomfortable at points throughout the fight. And I also thought that it would get into the later rounds um, it didn't get as late as I thought, because obviously six rounds is the middle of the fight, but all the other things I expected to see, we saw. And ultimately, Javante Davis not only winning this fight, obviously, you know, is great for the resume to say, hey, I had this tremendous six round knockout in a championship fight against a, a quality fighter such as Leo Santa Cruz. But I think he be, he really comes out of this in a much more uh, positive light in regards to his career as a fighter. Um, for the last few years, we've wondered how serious he is about the craft. He's had issues with weight in the past, making weight at 130 and 135. It actually cost, cost him his belt at one point where he was stripped of the title for being overweight. So to hear that he was in camp for 14 weeks leading up to this fight, to, to hear all the things we heard from not only his trainer, but from Floyd Mayweather and Leonard El Ellaby, uh, who are obviously uh, Mayweather promotions, they talked about a level of focus and dedication that they hadn't seen before this fight. He understood what was on the line. It was his first uh, headline as a pay-per-view fighter. I thought Leo truly did test him. There were moments in a fight early where you could see Tank noticed he wasn't just going to be able to physically impose his will on Leo Santa Cruz. He was going to have to box him at points. And when he needed to accelerate and put the pressure on Leo, he did, which led to the knockout. Um, I thought the fight was great. You know, I know people will, will focus on the, on the knockout, but if you watch the six rounds, I thought the first round was a draw. I thought you could have given the first round to either the fighter. It was that exciting. Uh, I thought Tank won the second round, but I thought Leo took the third round and Leo was winning that sixth round before he got knocked out. So it was a, a very entertaining fight. And we learned a lot about Tank Davis moving forward in the um, lightweight division. I hope that, you know, he can stay out of trouble, you know, outside of the ring. Uh, you know, he had the, the issue a couple of, a couple of months ago with his, the mother of his child. Um, this is, this is a big win for him moving up again. You said the issues that he had with, 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 uh, making weight for the fight. Um, the, you know, there is, there's a little bit of extra pressure on him because of the fact that he's Mayweather's guy. Um, so there's always going to be that extra pressure when you're talking about the, you know, the guy who's basically in your corner is, you know, arguably one of the greatest of all time, uh, undefeated Floyd Mayweather. So there's a little bit of extra pressure on him, but you know, th this fight in itself was huge. Um, like you said, the, the fight was actually, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of split up, up into this point. And he, and he, I mean, whew, I, I don't think he saw or had any idea that that uppercut was coming, but when he caught him, he caught him very good. It was, it was an ugly knockout. Um, you know, congrats to him on getting the win, get get another belt to add to the collection. Um, but again, he has to stay out of trouble off the fit, off the you know outside of the ring. I think that's the most important for Tank is is really outside because that's where it starts the men, the mentality, the mindset of, of what you're doing outside of the ring because that outside of the ring can actually affect what goes on inside the ring or whether or not you actually get to step back inside of the ring. So I, I really hope that this is the, all right, you know what? We got to mature. We're going to leave that behind us in the past. And, and, and we as fans of the sports and spectators, you know, we got to give them that, that, that opportunity to, to move on um, a, a huge uh, win for him. I'm looking forward to see, um, you know, what's going to happen next. If he's going to, if he's going to stay at the, uh, at, at that weight class or if he is going to continue uh, to move, move up and how long he is going to stay at that, that weight. I think he's going to give us two more fights at that weight. Um, there are some opportunities out there. The names have been floating around, obviously, have been in for quite some time. Ryan Garcia, 
Um, you got Mikey Garcia, who has flirted with 140 and 135. That's going to be available. Um, obviously, Teofimo, who was spectacular in his 135 match against um, Lomachenko, is going to be available. And they've thrown jab, verbal jabs at each other uh, the last few weeks since, since Teo won his fight. Um, in regards to your comment, and you're right, he, he's got to be more focused outside of the ring. And I think that was always the knock on him. It was never about the talent in the ring because we could see it. I mean, this is a guy, again, he's got 24 wins, 23 of them are knockouts. Um, he's only been to the 12th round one time in his career. And that was in his fight against um, Gamboa last December. And he stopped him in the 12th round. Um, and people highlighted the Gamboa fight because Gamboa actually tore his Achilles in the second round of that fight. And yet still went 12 rounds with Tank, which spoke again to Tank's level of commitment in the ring. Like there's no way that as talented as you are, Tank Davis, a fighter fighting on one leg should be able to take you to 12 rounds. You're supposed to get that guy up out of there. You know, the guy is hobbling yeah. around, but yet hanging around for some reason. And I think again, what we saw yesterday, and I give I, a major congratulations to Tank for this was Tank realized early in that fight, this is gonna be a battle. This, it ain't gonna be pretty. I'm not going to look spectacular in what I'm doing. Yes, the knockout was spectacular, but everything leading up to the to the fight was just that, a fight. They were exchanging. Every time Tank would get a combo off, Leo would get a combo off. Uh, you know, Tank was able to cut Leo at, on the bridge of his nose early in the fight. By that sixth round, Tank's right eye was swelling up. So mm -hmm. they, they, were, they were really going at it. And I think for the first time in Tank's career, he was tested by a guy who was good enough to test him. Tank is the better fighter. But Leo is a very good fighter. We actually had the, the privilege of seeing him in person at the Barclays. We know what he brings to the table. And so I think now Tank's level of confidence is going to shoot through the roof now because he's been tested. He knows what it takes to be a world champion and, and defend the belt at that level. And this is no different than when Mayweather was, was tested in his first battle uh, against Luis Castillo back in the 90s. And a lot of people think that Luis Castillo may have even beat Floyd in that first fight. But that made Floyd a better fighter moving forward because it was that moment in his career where he realized this is what it takes to be the level of champion that I want to be. And I've got to be able to get to that point anytime I'm in the ring. I think we're going to see a great Tank Davis moving forward. Um, I think I think Ryan Garcia might be the play because it's big for pay-per-view. Ryan Garcia has a huge mm -hmm. following on social media. Uh, it's really going to be up to De La Hoya if De La Hoya wants to put him in there because I, I personally don't think Ryan Garcia is ready for Tank Davis. But you know, if De La Hoya feels their fight is ready, I think that could be a major pay-per-view of two young stars. That one would actually be a really big fight. But one thing that you mentioned that could actually trip that thing up is the history between De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather. Because Floyd, May you know, because Tank is Floyd Mayweather's fighter and and, and, and he's with, uh, with De La Hoya, you know, that could get really tricky as well. So we got to kind of kind of see how this whole thing plays out if they're going to play nice with each other because, you know, uh, De La Hoya, is, is, he's going to get try to milk this fight for everything is worth. Mayweather is a guy who's not going to let you shortchange anything that he's doing. Like, it's to the point where it don't even have anything to do with, 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 with Tank Davis. Mayweather is not about to let you short, shortchange him on anything. So I'm I'm actually looking forward to seeing if they can actually get this fight to uh to to, to happen. Um, hopefully both sides can come together. I hate you know when we don't get to see fights because the promoters, you know what I mean, can't can't get get it together. And I think there's a huge possibility because of the history between De La Hoya and Mayweather. They've both taken shots at each other uh, several times, and this is well after. Their their fight, um, you know, when 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 Mayweather fought Conor McGregor, uh, De La Hoya had a, a lot to say in regards to, to Mayweather and just taking that fight, and then you know he actually ultimately wanted to do one as well afterwards. But they have they have issues going back and forth for years, so I'm interested to see how those two handle the the, the negotiations in in a possible super fight between the two of these guys. Yeah, it, it, like you said, there's always been bad blood between Floyd and Oscar. Um, and I think a lot of it is is uh, rooted in jealousy on Oscar's side. Um, Floyd took literally everything Oscar had. You know, when when Floyd left Bob Arum and, and started, you know, um, Mayweather Promotions and, and went out on his own, one of the main reasons was because Bob Arum wouldn't give him the fight with Oscar De La Hoya. And he mm -hmm. was begging for the fight with Oscar and they wouldn't give it to him. 
for, for whatever their reasoning was, whether they felt Mayweather is better than him and we don't want to lose our cash cow or they felt like maybe you're not ready, whatever their reasoning was, they didn't want to give Floyd the fight. And when yeah. he went out on his own and started Mayweather promotions and built up the name to the point where Bob Arum and him could no longer ignore him, he beats Oscar. He becomes the pound for pound king at that point when he beats Oscar. He becomes the pay-per-view king because mm-hmm. that fight against Oscar had broke all types of pay-per-view records. And him beating Oscar propelled him to far greater heights than Oscar had even seen in, in, his, in the world of boxing. And from that point on, Oscar never recovered that, you know, that glow that he had as the golden boy because it was no longer about him anymore. Floyd Mayweather had become the face the night he beat him. And Floyd May- Mayweather had continued to be the face of boxing for over a decade after that. Um, I think deep down, Oscar is not going to let Ryan Garcia fight uh, Tank Davis. And, and there are a couple factors. One, as I talked about, I don't think Ryan Garcia is ready for him right now. Right? Mm-hmm. Ryan Garcia has no one of credibility on his resume that we could say, hey, you beat that guy, so you deserve to get Tank. He has no fighter on his resume of that caliber. Uh, secondly, I think that Oscar and golden boy and bernard hawkins is over there as well they're great business minds and, and great boxing minds they know as you talked about that tank may not stay at 130 or 135 we know mm-hmm. that right now in the sport of boxing the big money is at 140 and 147 we've talked about it before errol spence terence crawford danny garcia keith thurman sean porter teofimo's already flirted with the idea of he's going mm-hmm. up Mikey Garcia did it a year and a half ago when he fought Spence. He went from 135 up to 140. So, and and let's not forget, uh, even though he's older, there's still a legend by the name of Manny Pacquiao who's floating around at 147. So Mm -hmm. there are so many big fights to be made at 140 or 147 that if you're you're Oscar De La Hoya and you feel that Ryan Garcia isn't ready yet, then you play the waiting game and you wait it out because you know deep down – Tank is not sticking around at 130 or 135 for much longer. Like I said, he may give us one or two more fights at that weight before he moves up to the big money and the bigger names. And if you're Ryan Garcia, you wait it out. And guess what? In a year and a half, the division is yours anyway because you're going to be the best fighter left. I mean, you still got Gary Russell Jr. You still got Devin Haney who are good fighters. But those guys aren't the level of Tank or Tiafimo. We, yeah. we just saw in the last three weeks two of the brightest young stars boxing has to offer – and those guys are on the rise. Both of those guys are in their early 20s on the rise. So if they stay at 135, there's no shot for Ryan Garcia to ever have a belt there. But with those guys possibly moving up, you play the weight game and you take over the division after those guys leave. What you don't want to, to happen is a, a uh, Canelo Alvarez Mayweather situation where you talk this big, big fight up and then we see that he really was not ready. And because Javante Davis is a knockout fighter, you you, you know, you, you step in there too early and that's going to be you getting knocked out. At least, you know what I'm saying, with, with Mayweather, at that point in his career, he wasn't a knockout fighter. So it's like, yeah, you know, you, you went the distance, but clearly Mayweather outclassed Canelo Alvarez in that fight. This ain't going to be like that. You go in the, in, in, into the ring right now with a young, powerful Tank Davis, and you're not prepared. You're not. You're not on, on that level just yet. He will knock you out, and it'll be ugly. Uh, ugly stain on your career. So I think he should do exactly what you said. Wait it out. Tank Davis is, is going to continue to move up soon. Let these guys go, and uh, and, and then you take over the division. Yeah, and, and, and that's it. Again, let's not be fooled by what took place yesterday. Leo knew about the uppercut. All fight, he was able to to either dodge it or eat it. He he was able to take it. But that last uppercut, he never saw coming. If you watch yeah. the replay, when he throws out the straight right hand, Tank slips it so lovely to the left and throws the uppercut that Leo's mm-hmm. hand is still extended when the punch lands. He never yeah. saw the punch coming. So with going into the fight and understanding that game plan, he wasn't able to avoid it. And for the Ryan Garcia fans, this is not a knock on Ryan Garcia. Like I say, he doesn't have that type of resume. Leo Santa Cruz is and he wasn't and he still is not a slouch. He just happened to go up against a supremely talented fighter who possesses mm-hmm. the type of power that we rarely see in the game. There, there are only a few guys that we ever talk about that have that type of power that we know one punch completely changes the dynamic of the fight. Tank showed us again, he is that type of fighter. As great as Leo's game plan was and as, as all the things as, as great as Leo was doing in that fight, that one punch changed the game. I'm telling you now, if you're Ryan Garcia, you do not take this fight, not now, 
damn sure not over the next year. If you take yeah. this fight, you better be talking 18 months from now when you when you giving yourself proper preparation for this type of fight because he will hurt you. And as you said, your career may never look the same after going in there with Tank. Exactly. No, 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 fuck off. This is your African King is coming, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Real talk, we as real as you thought.